Hey, what's up, everybody? Eric Kane, VolQuest.com, and today we're going to take a look at the offensive line for spring practice coming up in a couple weeks and, of course, for the start of the 2023 season. Tennessee's offense last year, number one in the country in scoring and total yards, the only offense in the country to average over 200 yards rushing and 300 yards passing a game, led the nation with 39 rushing touchdowns, and you'll lose two staples on that offensive line that you've got to replace an offensive tackle, Darnell Wright, who could end up being a first-round pick, and guard Jerome Carvin, who will likely make camp and compete for a roster spot in the National Football League. Both of those guys started for years upon years upon years, different positions, and were critical for the success of Tennessee's offense under Josh Heupel. But Darnell Wright and Jerome Carvin are gone, and you start with a group that does return a healthy dose of starters in center Cooper Mays, right guard Javante Spragans, and left tackles Gerald Mincy and J.J. Crawford. I split the left tackle position up because both of those guys, Crawford and Mincy, played a lot of left tackle this year. They pretty much shared that starting role depending on a game-by-game -game basis. Will that be the same in 2023? Gerald Mincy, to this point, cannot play on the right side. J.J. Crawford has shown the ability that he can play right tackle, doing so in parts of the 2021 season and in that bowl game. But those are the big question marks. You've got to find a right tackle, and you've got to find a left guard. Could two additions via the transfer portal fill those gaps? Well, Tennessee is hoping so. And off to the tackle, John Campbell from Miami. Campbell is an experienced college football player. He's played pretty much every position but center on the offensive line and started every game at left tackle for Miami last season. Is he the answer to what Tennessee needs at right tackle? They are hoping so for sure, because I think John Campbell could solve a lot of that. Now, he's not going to be Darnell Wright, but he is an experienced guy that has played that position and could step in and play right away. But this spring would be critical for him and how he adapts to this offense and to this scheme. Tennessee also brought in offensive lineman Andre Kirick of Texas, who spent the majority of his Texas career as a backup offensive lineman. He's played tackle. Maybe he could slide into guard in this Tennessee offense and take the spot of Jerome Carvin. That's some of the talk right now. Of course, we'll get a better look at that come spring practice. You did sign four offensive linemen from this past signing class and offensive tackle Sham Umarov. Junior college offensive tackle Larry Johnson. Guard Vison Lang and guard Aiden Bussell. How close are any of those guys, specifically junior college offensive tackle Larry Johnson, to contributing? I think this spring will be a big test for all of those guys and to see how close they can be to contributing. Big time questions this year. What about the backup center? You've got Cooper Mays, but Tennessee really hasn't had a backup center in two years. There's no center of the future, if you will. In the last couple of years, Jerome Carvin has slid down to play center in an emergency situation, but could that be Addison Nichols, a class of 2022 offensive line signee for Tennessee? I think it could be. This might be a big time spring for him, but he's got a lot to prove now his third semester in college. What about Brian Grant? He was, remember, he was the guy that was new to football, basketball player, six foot seven signee in the class of 2022. This will be a big time spring for Brian Grant to see how much he's progressed. He's got the body that you love in an offensive tackle, but where is he in terms of his progression? We'll see come spring. And then what about Mo Clipper and Messiah Reddick? Messiah Reddick. Uh, was complimented a couple different times by former offensive coordinator Alex Golish back in the fall. How much has he progressed and how close are those guys to be filling in roles for Tennessee, whether it be backup roles or potentially pushing for some playing time? You still have veteran backups in Ollie Lane, who's played a number of different positions for Tennessee the last couple of years, and Jackson Lampley, who can play both guard spots and center on a, on a need-to-know basis. But is that just what those guys are going to be, or will they be contending for some starting positions for maybe that guard spot that Jerome Carvin is leaving behind? We know that William Parker and R.J. Perry are no longer a part of the program. Both of those guys entered the transfer portal to look for better opportunities. So we will see what Tennessee has in store on the offensive line. Heading into the 2023 season, a big-time spring awaits as you try to replace two staples in Darnell Wright and Jerome Carvin for an offense that's been top 10 both years under Josh Heupel in the country and led the nation in total yards and scoring in 2022. It's not just about quarterbacks and wide receivers and Bolitnikoff award winners and should-be Heisman finalists. It's about those five hog mollies up front that make it all work. 
Tennessee's offensive line's got some work to do this spring, and they're going to have to rely on center Cooper Mays and veterans Javante Spragans, J.J. Crawford, and Gerald Mincy to lead the way in trying to find that new group of five up front. For continual coverage of Tennessee football heading into spring practice, you know where to find it, VolQuest.com and right here on the VolQuest YouTube channel. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video here at VolQuest on YouTube, the leading source of University of Tennessee football, basketball, and recruiting. Be sure to check out our latest video right here and the, our latest live show right above it. All that at VolQuest.com and VolQuest on YouTube.